You're watching the Horticultural Channel. Hello, Happy New Year and welcome back to another series. Now, it's January, it's a nice blue sunny day. This is exactly how January started off last year, so who knows, maybe it's a good omen and we'll have a good year again this year. But the ground is a bit sodden. We've had rain constantly for the last uh, seven, ten days maybe. Now, one of the problems that I've got is, besides hitting my head on this, now one of the problems that I have is that they've cut the wood exactly to how I need it, but they haven't marked it. They've given me the offcuts, which is one thing that you have to keep an eye on your local timber merchant or anybody like that, because sometimes if you send things in and you ask, can I have them cut to this size, they tend to keep the offcuts, but the, the um, the timber place that I go to is quite good because they send you the offcuts because at the end of the day you've paid for them. But the thing is, I have to work out what's an offcut and what isn't. I think that's one. It's a nice tidy size, that one. And there's one or two pieces I thought I may still need to get, but because of the offcuts, I've got so many offcuts, I'm maybe okay. Happy New Year! <laughs> Ah, look at this. Looking good so far. And it actually stands up by itself. If you move that away, it stands up. It should. <laughs> oh, well done. So I've got six planks of 2 by 2 They've come in a bundle pack. Works out a bit cheaper that way. And because the wood is too long, because I purposely bought wood that was a bit longer, I've measured where I need to cut, so I need to go outside and do a bit of sawing and just cut off this little bit there. So now for the test to see if I've cut that correctly. Perfect. Look at that. Wonderful. I'm not in that much of a hurry this year to get my seeds started. It's January and what I'm going to do this year is I'm going to continue to do the building work in January and then hold off all my seed sowing until February. But you could, if you wanted to, leave it until March because they'll still catch up. There's very few things that you would uh, need to put in now and anyway the weather's no good so as much as the package will say to you plant in January you've also got to take into consideration the local weather conditions and the ground is too wet and it's just not perfect for doing anything at the moment so January will be building work and then in February we'll go back in the greenhouse and start uh, seed sowing. So what I'm doing now is I'm just working out how deep to put this uh, sofa that I'm building. So I'm drilling the holes and I'll put the screws in later. Now I'm not putting them all the way in, I'm just putting them in loosely for the time being.
So, the next job, it's a good job with this weather, because I would have been out there if uh, the weather had been good. Right, I've got some boards, and these will just sit on top of these two struts, but they're too large, so I'm going to have to uh, saw them. So there's the first part. There we go. I think I'll have a sleep. See you in a moment. So there we have it. The shed seat and day bed is now finished. It's nice and rigid. Look at that. And then there's space underneath for storage and the cat's bowl down there. Jeff was throwing this out from his caravan, so he passed it on to me. It's a nice piece of form. So this is the form for the seat. Let me get a scissors and cut it. I've just had to come back down to the allotment because the rain has started and I had a few bits of wood outside so I've brought them in and it's actually quite cosy in here. Um, this is the work that I've done today which you saw me do and the cupboard, I've got some candles up. I've also got my little heater here as well. So it's all quite cosy at the moment, especially with the rain tampering against the, uh, the roof. really rather cosy in here, so I'm going to have to stay in here now until the rain passes. But I've got my heater, I've got my candles, and I've got the radio. I can listen to some music. I'm just going to uh, chill out in the new shed and wait for the storm to pass. There you go, a bit of lightning. Well, it just goes to show that even in a storm, it's nice and cosy in here. Well, the storm is certainly picking up. The roof just felt as if it was about to come off. And there's water coming in through the sides here. Oh, yes. So at least one of the good aspects of being down here now is that I can see what parts need to be covered up. Look, there's all water coming in down through this join here, so I will take this off and do a better job. But yes, yeah, certainly stormy. Let's have a look outside. I didn't see the forecast today, so I wasn't aware of what the weather was going to be, but like I said, one positive is that I'm here and I can see where the water's coming in and I can get that sorted. So the next fine day, that's what the job is, to sort the roof out. Morning all, it's a cold day and I'm in the shed and I've brought a little clock down. It's one of these radio um, control clocks, so just something to start to decorate the shed with. Now, I don't want to shock you, so just brace yourself because I'm going to talk about a bit of gardening. Garlic. If you haven't put your garlic in, you still have up until the end of February to do it. And don't buy garlic from the supermarkets. It's 
far better to go to a seed merchant because uh, these are disease free and the ones you buy from the supermarket may actually uh, have some diseases in. Now, I'm not going to plant these today because my ground is still a bit waterlogged. So the perfect conditions for planting garlic is if the ground is uh, dry and not flooded like mine is. So the first thing you do with these is You've got to break it up, up, just break it up with your hands because it's the smaller cloves inside what we need. So these are the actual bulbs that will be planted. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So there's eight in this one, ten. Just about squeeze ten out of them. Now, when you go to plant them, what I like to do is just to take all these papery skins off on the outside. Just like that, just scra scrape them off with your thumb, with a nail. And you plant them that side up. Now these are where the roots will come out of. So when you plant them, don't just stick them in the ground, actually make a hole with your finger and pop them in. Because if you push them into the ground, you will actually damage the, the, the bottoms here. And this is where the roots are gonna come from. So that's the last thing that you want to do. Just leave the tops showing like that. So put all the soil just up to the neck of it. But the problem with doing that is, that is the correct way of doing it, but the birds actually think that these are worms and they'll come along and they'll, and they'll pull the bulb out until it's just sat on top. So keep an eye on them, or if you want to construct some netting or even put some fleece on, on top of them, and uh, they'll be okay like that. But just keep an eye on them for uh, about a week or two until they actually establish themselves, just to make sure that the birds don't decide to have a feed. This year I'm only going to be growing two varieties of potatoes. Last year I just had too many. So I'm putting one variety into the garden, that'll be my main crops, which will be harvested run about August, September, October. And I'll be doing another variety in bags, that'll be my first earlies, which I'll be cropping in about uh, 12 weeks. Now I've only just ordered them, so they're still in the post. but. One of the first things you have to do, well, you don't have to do them, but it does give the potato a bit of a head start, is something that we call chitin. Now, this is just an egg box, and what you do is you put your potato, in fact, I made a video about it last year, so let's have a quick look at that. And what we want is nice, stumpy shoots from the eyes of the potato. So how do we achieve that? We need to get something like this this is a, a mushroom box and all you do is simple is you just place the potatoes in the box with the eyes facing upwards now if you have any egg boxes it's a lot easier to put them in the egg boxes but the one thing that you must do with these is place them in a frost free environment so in the shed or in the garage as long as you don't get any frost. February time is still the preparation month. Getting everything ready and in place for when March comes along and the season of sowing seeds and everything really kicks off. There we go and there we have it. A shelf for your pots come springtime. That's a great addition to the greenhouse, or two shelves. Now this one, you might think, is a bit too close to the roof, but a tip that uh, somebody gave me a few years ago was from Mr. Ken Nutt. He was a fuchsia grower, loved his fuchsias, and in the winter he would put one of the shelves closer to 
the, the roof because that is the warmest point in the greenhouse and it aided uh, germination and cuttings of his fuchsias. Now, sadly, Ken died a few years ago, but in the months leading up to his death, I did get the opportunity to interview him about his fuchsias. Well, what I'm going to do, in actual fact, is take out some of the growing tips because what I'm going to be doing now is making them so they will be bushy. Getting early cuttings January, February time, I grow mine in the polythene bag in the plant dish, like this. That's where the wolf is up in the top of the greenhouse at that time of the year. So three to four weeks and I've got some cuttings. Of course, April May, uh, April, May time, you don't need that really. Off the bench, in trays, and you can do them like that. And that's my best tip, but don't tell anyone. Because I haven't got a lot of space in the greenhouse, this year I'm going to grow tomatoes outdoors in hanging baskets. So if you haven't got a garden, you can put a hanging basket outside your front door or your back door or even outside the window and you can grow your own tomatoes. And this is a variety called Rosetto and this is what I'm going to sow now. So first of all, fill a pot with some compost. I like to do them in these trays here. And one of the things in gardening is all about quality. Now I like to have a good quality compost. It costs a little bit more money. But if you use cheap things, then you're not going to get a very good product out at the end. And this isn't expensive, this uh, bag of soil. It's just a few pounds. And you'll, you'll be using it for quite a few months down the line as well. Now. If you have a greenhouse or even in the kitchen, bring your bag of compost in a few days before you're going to sow so that the temperature of the compost adheres to the temperature of the room that you're in because you can actually give seeds a shock if you put them into cold compost. So just get a pot, firm it down and if you need to put a bit more soil in to even it out do that and now the seed I like to open my seed over where I'm going to sow so if any do fall out of the packet at least they'll fall onto the soil now I can get nine out of this uh, compartment so just put your finger in don't go down too deep just go down to say the knuckle So you don't have to be too tidy about it and then get the seed now this is the seed of the tomato there those little brown things you will always read in gardening they'll say put two seeds per station well seeds actually cost a bit of money these days so I only put one seed per station and if it doesn't grow I'll then put another one in but at least I'm not wasting it It's a nice relaxing job, sowing your seed. And if you've got a greenhouse, I would put them in the greenhouse. If you haven't, I'd put them onto the kitchen windowsill. Because they do need a bit of heat at this time of year. And if you can't put them to have a bit of heat, then leave them until March when the outdoor temperature will rise a bit and then just fill the holes in 
Now this compost is already damp, but if it wasn't, I'd give it a bit of spray with some water. And the one thing you must not forget to do, which I always tend to, is pop a label in, because I guarantee you, the things you don't put the labels in are the things that turn out to be the best croppers. And at the end of the year, you'll be kicking yourself and thinking, what the hell was that tomato called? So, put these on the windowsill. Something else you can buy this month, but we won't plant them till the warmer days in March, are shallots. I've got red and white, and just go through them when you buy them. Just tip them all out. And just go through them, just to check that they're all okay. And so that air can circulate around them. Because if you leave them in their bags, the likelihood is they'll start to create mould and go off by the time you need them. Just tip them all out. Also, don't forget to do, I wonder if you spotted it, let me just get these out. Red and white look the same at this point. So, hold on, where's that one? Got one stuck in there somewhere, there you go. Now, they look the same, so don't forget, keep them apart. Don't forget to put the labels on top so that you remember what they are when we come to plant them in March. Pretty cheap, they were two pound each. Now that one, see that's got a bit of mould in so I'll get rid of that one. Everything else seems, seems okay. Now if you have two like that you can actually split them. You have two more plants. Nice fat one there. Um, what about the red ones? Red ones look fine to me. Well, with all the work that I've done in the greenhouse today, it actually starts to feel that the gardening year has kicked off. Last year I grew globe artichokes and they were very good at attracting bees into the garden. There was many minutes I spent just watching them fly in with nectar all over their legs and flying out again. They were here for weeks. Well, if you want to grow some globe artichokes, now is the time to do it. And I'm sowing the variety Green Globe. Good thing about doing globe artichokes is the fact that you can eat them or leave them to flower and then they're good enough for the bees. The bees absolutely adore them. And they'll stay in the garden for about five years before you need to change the plants over. But the thing with globe artichokes is if you want them for eating is not to take a harvest in the first year because you need the plant to become bigger and better and then you get your first crop in the second year but if you want them for flowers obviously that's fine you can just leave them in and you'll get a good crop in the first year so just fill your pots up with compost and now let's pop the seed in that's the seed of the globe artichoke Looks a bit like a sunflower. So it's one seed per station because these are quite a robust seedling and it will quickly fill this little space. Now I'm not going to do the whole pot because I don't want that many. So I'll just do eight. In fact, what I'll do is I'll do some more and I can give them away to other people on the plot that have admired them over the last year. 
pop the seed back in. And if you have too much seed of something, then why not give it away to somebody else? And maybe they'll have some seeds that, that you want. Then just cover them with soil. It's a nice day for doing this. Nice and sunny, birds are singing. You can sow your globe artichokes in February or March. And I'll keep these in the greenhouse and then when the threat of frost has passed, I'll then put them outside. Then just give them a, a brief watering. Nothing too much at this time of year. You don't want them to, uh, to, to drown. And there we go, I'll pop them in the greenhouse. These are the onions that I put in last December and there's not a lot to do with them at the moment this time of year but all I am going to do is just go through the bed and just take out any weeds that, that are in here just so that the plants have a fair chance to grow nice and big. I'll then put the pieces of glass back on top it's still getting frosty. The glass will stay on until I'm sure that the last frost is finished, which won't be until May. I'm thinking I may do a bit of construction work. I've got a few pieces of wood there that I bought for the path, but because the uh, sheds moved in the last few weeks The path now has to go in a different place. So I'll be coming out of the shed and directly onto the path. So That's what I might do. I'm gonna make a path I was just moving the tripod to get a good angle on what I'm about to film and all of a sudden look what I've just spotted do is I'll just put him by the side of the pond. Now let's get on with some digging. Too hot for tea, cold still water. Now, one of the problems that I've got in the shed is the sofa come day bed is full with potatoes, chitin and seeds and plants and bulbs and everything that needs to go into the garden. So I can't actually lay down and enjoy the space that I created. So what I think I may do now is to tidy up the other half of the shed and if I can find enough pieces of wood I may even make a little table so I can put all this over there and I can have a lay down because today is the perfect day for laying down and just enjoying the weather.
I've managed to get some of these, um, what you call them, boxes. So I'm going to clean the shed and put all my crap that's underneath the uh, sofa into the boxes. And look who's just turned up for a feed. He's already been fed twice today, so you might just have to wait. Just about fit for you. Look at that, perfect. Three exact fits. As if I'd planned it. It's gone really cold all of a sudden. I've got some smaller boxes, so I'm going to clean up this area here. There's still a lot of bulbs to go in, but my focus at the moment is a bit on this edible garden show, because as you know, I've mentioned it before, that at the end of the month, the Horticultural Channel has been asked to stage a guest garden at the edible garden show at Alexandra Palace in North London in the last weekend of March. So I'm going to be redesigning the allotment there at Alexandra Palace, so that's taken up a bit of my time at the moment. But there's plenty to be getting on with, and there's no big rush to get everything done in March. You can still take take your time and do things the end of March, beginning of April, so don't be thinking after have to put all my seeds in or anything like that, because there's still plenty of time. Alright, let's crack on and clean up. starting to look a bit more decent in here anyway. I'm going to have to get some gas and then I can fire up the uh, the kitchen again. So that's all from me. Rusty's gone and like I said I need a cup of tea so I'm going to uh, shut the doors and head home. So for me and everybody else, see you next time. It's only 8 o'clock in the night, but it's already dark. I was just in the house and the wind, I could hear the wind howling outside and when I opened the front door, I could feel the temperature dropped. So I've come to put the burner on in the greenhouse. It's worth coming over to put the heat on. I don't want to uh, lose these. Look at them, they're all making fantastic growth. There's the lettuce there. One of the problems I have at the moment is the greenhouse is getting too hot. As you can see, these seedlings here of the uh, salad have died. That's down to the fact that the greenhouse is just too warm in the day. Average temperature is, look at that, 40 degrees today. And on average, it's about 50 degrees. I think there's a problem with my automatic uh, vent here. So I'm going to have to check that out in a few days time. Look how good this lettuce is. So it's been in for about, oh, about a week. So it is worth coming down and just making sure that nothing dies off. Look at my broad beans there. Next door to that, nasturtiums. And some more broad beans on this side. So let's put the heater on. Put the lid back 
silicone. Don't want it up too high because then it'll create black smoke and that's not what we want. If you look in the corner here, there's a bell. And when the kettle's boiled and I'm in the mood for some visitors, I ring the bell. And those who want a cup of tea can come over. Okay. Kettle's boiled. Um, yeah. Shall I bring my kettle over? But Graham was just saying, let's put the kettle on. And I said, no, you have to work before you have a cup of tea. But you're the old... Not too sure about that. No, you agree with Graham, don't you? A cup of tea before you work. A cup of tea sets you up. Bicky, maybe. This may not be safe, but we'll see in the morning. So I'm just going to pull it away from the window. Yeah, it's already feeling cold. Everything else has got the insulation on except that window. So let's put that there. And then we'll put the other pot on top. It's not going to keep the place hot, but hopefully frost free. Because according to the forecast, the next few nights are going to be quite cold. So like I said before, we've had frost for the last few Aprils, so we mustn't fall into this trap of nice weather. Rusty's enjoying his food there. A romantic meal by torchlight. There we go, kettle spoiled. It'll warm me up now on my way home. Graham's come down to give me a hand. So we're going to pop down to the plot now and dismantle everything and pack the car up and then pop to the garden centre to pick up some plants. And then it's off to the show. Hello, Rusty. Here we are, Graham. Oh, it looks a bit different without the fence, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. Where's the guy? Rusty's just about to pack his bags and come with us. I'm taking this with me. This is some of the Swiss chard I've been growing. And this, yes, I'm actually taking grass. So there it is. That is the allotment in the van. All the plants are ready. The fence and there's Graham just threw the fence somewhere. So let's hit the road. Yep, absolutely. Just gonna put that on the shop. And we're off. And we're off. We're about an hour away from the actual venue. Graham, we've got you at last. Yeah. Now we're just waiting to uh, go into the show and then we can start to unload our things and then it's time for a cup of tea, I think. I think so as well. So hopefully we won't be too long. And we're in. She hasn't told us where to go. No, we didn't. Oh, <laughs> well, it looks like we're driving in, folks. Yeah. We might be able to go straight onto it. I'll go. Okay. This is. I hope we're going to enjoy ourselves, yeah?
So this is where we are so far. Just over there in the corner, you'll see that's the Royal Protocol Party. They're going through the steps of where Prince Charles and Camilla will go. So they will be walking past our stall. So Graham's just doing a quick tidy up and then we can do this side. And it's, it's time for a well-earned cup of tea because we haven't had a cup of tea since about eight o'clock this morning. So there we have it, that is the completed Sean's allotment garden, I think it looks like the, the allotment, so just, cause it's even got weeds as well, yeah. which every good allotment must have. So this is Graham, off to make a, to make a cup of tea in the shed. One of the highlights was to meet up with so many of the viewers and listen to stories about their gardens. So what do you think of the garden? Pretty authentic, it's not too far off. And the weeds. <laughs> and the weeds, yeah, you had to have those, otherwise it wouldn't be real, would it? And the dust. So what do you think of the garden? Brilliant. It's really Inspirational. Good. It's very good, very tidy at the moment. Lots of things coming up. At the moment it's tidy. Yes, it is, yes. I think the garden's fantastic and I recognise it from the YouTube channel. It looks exactly like I imagined it would look like. Okay. Where have you come from and what do you think of the garden? I've come from southwest France and I think the garden's amazing, it's really pretty. How does it feel to be in it? It feels like a taste of things to come. I think the garden is really nice. I'm impressed by your raised beds, and your trucks. And I'm particularly impressed by the wild nettles down there. They're very good indeed. <laughs> I think it's lovely. It's it's a bit neater than your garden. Because <laughs> what I love about your show is you're always tidying up. And then two shows later, you have to tidy up again. Yeah, <laughs> it, you're always tidying. But no, I love it. Yeah, I love your show as well. It's been great. I think it's absolutely brilliant. You know, it looks like yours. <laughs> Well, I haven't seen too much because I just wanted to come and see you oh, straight away. Oh, yeah, go, go. That's it. Um, no, yeah, but it's yeah. really good. Got some great chicken advice. So that's my next. Um, Are you going to build a hen? Some, uh, yeah, I want to get some chickens. Oh, oh that's what we we'll, that's what we love. To this do. lady comes from Greenwich. There you go. We're having a cup of tea in the makeshift shed. <laughs> Well, it's the end of the show and Graham's turned up to help pack everything up and here it is. That is the, the allotment in a van. We've just about managed to get it all in and now we're going to go home and the space is all empty there so Graham, yeah. how do you feel with this experience? I would definitely do it again but I want a bit more time. Uh, it was really 
fun. A and bigger van. Fun. Yeah, bigger van. It was all fun, truthfully. A bigger van we need, but now we're going to head home. And have a cup of tea. And have a cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we'll, ca we'll catch up with you next week when we're back on the allotment to do a bit of gardening and a bit of tidying up. See you then. This bed is the green manure mustard and next door to it is the green manure field bean. Looks like a broad bean. What I need to do with this is just to cut it down and then work it into the soil and that will add some nutrients. It's a cheap way of putting manure onto your garden. But as you would have noticed something looks a bit different. The fence has gone and the gate's been pulled down. Now the first thing to do in the garden is to put the fence back and put the gate back up. very windy today. I've decided to do some cleaning. That area there, I'm going to clean that up so it makes it easier for me to get to my new carrot bed. Let's have a brew. What a difference a brew makes. Just a simple cup of tea. Now taking some inspiration from my own garden at the Edible Garden Show, I've done a bit of cleaning up. I've also done a bit of fixing of this greenhouse here. If you remember that the top came off in the wind, so I've fixed that. Next door to that is a box. You saw me build it earlier. And in this box will go sand. And in the sand will go my carrots. And this bit of downpipe here, that will be for coring out the, um, the growing spaces for the carrots. I first saw this plan for growing carrots when I lived in South Wales, because I used to live next door to Ivor Mace and Dennis Fletcher and they were show people and the two of them in their time they've both been in the Guinness World Book of Records for growing the biggest onions, carrots, you name it, they've grown it so that's where I'm taking my inspiration for that little bit of a uh, carrot bed let's have a look in the greenhouse all the seedlings in the greenhouse are doing rather well at the moment. There's the leeks in the back and I'll be transplanting some of these into their bigger pots or into the open ground next week. Now if you remember a couple of months ago I sold some green manure and here it is and I should have really cut this down about a week ago and the general feeling is of these roots you will see there are little nodes well they are nitrogen nodes and what you do 
as you just go through just before they come into flower. Like I said, I'm doing this about a week or two late, mainly because I was busy with doing the show garden. But now is a good time. So just cut them back like that. And all you do is you just lay them on top. And once I've done the whole bed, I'll go through it again and I'll fork this into the actual soil. And this is a cheap way of adding goodness to the soil. You do exactly the same thing if you just want to put newer in. Just put the manure on top and dig that in. This is field bean and on the bed next door is mustard and I'll do the same there. So cut it down and turn it in about a month before you want to plant or sow in this, in this space. I haven't decided what's going in this space yet but it's coming up to the middle of April so I will be planting in here soon. Got a bit of a sniffle today. Now the first task I'm doing is transplanting my lettuce. These are the ones that I did from seed. Red on the right hand side there and uh, green on the left hand side. So anyway, you get the gist. Today I'm going to be transplanting my lettuce. So I've got some compost and now we need to take the lettuce out. This is called Little Gem, and that is Intred. So I think I'll do the Little Gem first. Now I've got a scissors, and what you do is just put it underneath the seedling, and just lift it up, and try and take as much of that seedling root ball as possible. Now, I could have done these a bit earlier, when they were a bit smaller, but time was against me, so I'm doing them now. Then let's get a pot, fill it with some good quality compost like I said. And if, you, if you take another pot and just use that to press it down. I'm still going to keep these in the greenhouse or on the windowsill or on the cold frame because it's still a bit too cold to put them out. And then just put your finger in, make a little hole And then pop the seedling in. Give it a tap. Press it in. Make sure it's in. Not too tight, but just enough. And I'm going to put some more compost around the side. Now, after you've done this, sometimes the, the seedling will just fall over. That's perfectly fine. It'll sort itself out in a few days. And give it a squirt of water and then like I said pop that in the greenhouse on the cold frame or back on the windowsill but don't put it outside so far well it depends about your local frost but it's still chilly here so I'm not going to risk it right let's do some more and if you find that you have two or three just gently catch them by the leaf and pull them apart like this one here just very gently and the roots will sort themselves out this will be the last time that I'll transplant them from here I'll put them straight into the ground when the weather is better and I'll do the same with the red ones as well
I realized when I put this bark on the floor the other day that Rusty cannot slide under. So I'm gonna give him a helping hand and cut a piece of the fence off. There you go. I'm sure Rusty will be pleased with that. A nice day today so I'm going to plant my shallots. Now when you plant shallots don't push the bulbs in, always loosen the soil and then put the bulb into the ground like so. These are called red sun so it's a perfect day to do it today, a nice sunny day and then I'll give them a really good watering and that'll be shallots done for the year. On the left side here, these are the green manures that I turned over a week ago. My onions are doing great guns in there. Really putting on some weight now. There's a few little bits of grass which I don't want there, so just take them out. Try and take as much root as possible. Oh, my onions are growing on nicely, but if you look here, this is actually a seed head, so if I open that, you can see from there, the fl the flower will come and the seeds will uh, grow. But the problem with that is, that takes all the goodness out of the actual onion. So what I do is I just go around and I just take the bit off as far down as I can go. But it does mean that I will be harvesting these onions earlier than planned. Oh, it's a great smell on them. I've been sent a birthday gift from a company called Woodblock. It's a bench with two planters, so I've decided to put it in the flower garden. But first of all, I need to prepare the space.
you remember I had a pot of violas I've put them in this section here and then across over here is where I've put some of the original flowers that were in this section the grasses and the alliums and it's starting to rain now so that's quite good everything will get a good watering in These sweet peas turned up in the post this morning. Nice sturdy plug plants. But I'm not ready to put them out yet because we're still getting frost. So I'm going to transplant them into pots. And the same as everything when you transplant, put a bit of compost into a pot, firm it down, make a little hole with your finger, pop it in, firm it in, and give it a tap and like that give it a bit a bit of watering and I'll put these in the cold frame until the last frost which should be within the next fortnight I'm going to sow some radishes and I'm going to sow some carrots now but I'm going to try these which I've never tried before it's the seeds are impregnated into these strips so that they are perfectly spaced so I'm going to put them in the veg truck if you've tried these yourself, then let me know how you did with them in the comments below. Now the first thing I'm doing is I'm sowing carrots, and this is a variety called Sweet Candle, which is doing the, the rounds at the moment. It's a popular one, and I'm going to sow this in, in the center of my veg truck, because that's where the biggest depth is. So just do a furrow with your hand and you take a strip, you just measure it, cut it off and then just lay it down in the furrow like so and cover with soil and we'll see how we go with them in a few weeks. Then on the side I'm going to put some radish and because they don't need as much depth I'll put them on the side of the veg truck on each side I'll put them but for the time being because I don't want all the radish to come at the same time I'll do a successional sowing so I'll do one side today and the other side in a fortnight Put them back in the packet before it gets mixed up with the carrot. And again, you just pop them in like that and cover with the soil. Give everything a good watering at the end. And what I'm going to put on the other side is some lettuce. These are the lettuce I've been doing from seed. They've turned into some wonderful plants. This one is Little Gem, and the one next door is Intred. And because these may be affected by slugs and snails, I'm going to have to put some protection out and I've got some organic slug pellets. And, and then in this space, in a week's time, will be the next lot of radishes. Now, because the cats like to use this as a local litter tray sometimes, and I have to put some protection over the top of it. Now, the shallots that I planted a few weeks ago, they've now established themselves, so it's safe enough now to pull this, this protection down. And I will use that protection over on this bed, and I'll construct something that will make the cats stay off it and the birds stay away from it. The 
going to sow some beetroot today. And first thing, just put your hand in the soil, make a drill. Like so. But in this section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this seed tip, which has all the seed already in these pieces of tape. And the advantage of using these is the fact that the seed is already sown. So all you have to do is just gently untangle it and then you just sew it into the ground like that. I'll give them a water as well because it's quite a, a warm day today. And you just cover it with soil, trying to keep it straight, <laughs> like that, and then give them some water, pop a label on the end, and just leave them, and that's all you do. So I'll be interested to see how they come up. Now one thing I'm going to do now is to pot on my tomato tumbler. This is a hanging basket from last year, but it didn't have any drainage in it. So I'm just going to go through and cut a few little slits in the plastic, just to make sure that the water drains out. Right, let's fill that with some good multi-purpose compost. There's even flowers already started to come on. Now I'm going to put three in this pas in this basket, like that, and just turn it upside down, give it a squeeze on the bottom, and I'm holding it by the bottom. Try not to hold the stem, because obviously that's where all the goodness is going to come from. Now I will add more compost in. Just going to get them into position. This may seem a bit too many for one basket, but I've done this in the past and it's worked fine. So, let's just fill that with compost. If you've got some slow release fertilizer, now is the time to add it. And some of the water retaining crystals. But this basket, like I said, is very good for holding moisture and this compost is, is a peat based compost so that's quite good as well right let me concentrate on what I'm doing here a second I'll just fill it around if you've got some lobelia you can put that to grow out to the sides if you want to but I'm going to keep this all tomatoes so nothing else competes. If there is a threat of frost, I will come down and I will put it into the greenhouse. But we're getting quite close to the end now of the frost alert, so. Right, give that some water and let's hang it outside. All my seedlings are coming along quite nice at the moment. So all these will be going out over the coming weeks when my health gets back to normal. And in the greenhouse the peas are growing now where they're at the stage to go out along with the runner beans. But like I said I'll do that when I've got a bit more energy. I also need to clean the greenhouse out. So I take all this out and then set everything up ready for the tomatoes. If you 
get these coming on your onions, that means they've gone to seed. So there's nothing more I can do than to lift them. So I will lift them all and I'll just put them on the patio for a few days in order to dry out in the sun and then I'll be able to use what is actually there. Because the problem with it going to seed is that if I was to open this now, you would see that stalk runs all the way down into the bulb. But there's, there'll still be bits there that I can use in the kitchen and then I can use this part of the garden for something else. So this is my crop of onions. Not as good this year as it was last year, must be honest. And when I say about the onions going to seed, you can also tell when you cut the tops off, if you look down, if there's a hollow piece like that, that means that the seed stem is gonna go all the way down into the bulb. So let me just open that. This is a product that I picked up. It's a scissors plus a knife. Um, so, right, let me open this up and I'll show you what's inside. There'll still be things, you know, there's, there'll still be a bit of uh, something to use it would help if I use the right side of the knife but as you can see this flower stem goes all the way down into the actual bulb like that and it's quite a big chunk as well but there are still bits of onion in there that I can use but unfortunately because it was so hot last month um, I couldn't get down here to water them. Now, even though there's a bit of uh, seed stem in there, I think this one may actually be okay to use. Right, shall I cut this one? Yes, let me cut this one open as well. Oh, it's a bit slippery on top, is it? The top layers have started to uh, to go mouldy. Oh, my eyes are starting to water now. See, now even though there's a flower stem there, there's still plenty at the base of the bulb that I can use in the kitchen. So that's one little tip is when you cut your bulbs on the top you can see if the flower stem is going all the way down or not like that one that one will still be okay for the kitchen because it's a small one but this one it's quite a big one and the same as the first one you'll see this will be rather a big flower stem there you go look there's hardly anything there other than just stem. So it's a poor crop this year, but there's still some nice bits of onions and I'm gonna have to finish this bit because my eyes are starting to water. It's time to plant the runner beans, but first of all I'm just going to put a few handfuls of rock dust onto the soil and I'll work it in as I go on. Now, I 
would have normally put them in by now, but time was against me, so they're going in now. The variety is Firestorm, and it's a case of just making a hole and popping them in. What I am going to do, I'm going to try this this year, I'm going to put some of this pea and bean feed into every hole. Never tried it before. If you have, let me know in the comments. Just a small quarter of a handful, pop it in, push the pot so I don't damage it. Look at those roots. They're just waiting to get out. And I'm planting on the inside, and you'll see why in a moment. So, push that down, cover with soil. And the reason why I'm doing it on the inside is because then it's just directly up and on the pole. Because I don't have enough plants for these food here, I'm just going to pop two seeds in per station. That'll also help with the successional, so oh, I'll have some beans later on in the season. Now, this mint I've had for a few years and I actually want to get a bit more of it. So I'm gonna pot it on and I've just got one of these plastic pots. They look a bit awful, but they do the job and they're cheap. So I'm gonna put some new soil in. And then there's a viola in there as well. That can stay. There's also a bit of grass in there. So let me see if I can just See if I can tease that out. Now, mint. I warn you now, if you put mint into your garden, it'll be all over the place within a couple of months. That's why we always grow mint in a pot to contain the roots. But if you want plenty of mint, and I mean plenty, that will last you for years and the rest of the community, then put it in the open ground, but you will regret it. I like mint sauce, so I tend to harvest this on Sundays, chop a bit up. And a neat trick is if you take some of the leaves and just pop them into those ice cube trays with a bit of water, pop them in the fridge, in the freezer. When you want some for your mint sauce you just take a few cubes out and then just pop them into the hot water. So there we go. B beautiful smell coming off this as well. I will leave that viola there. Looks, looks quite attractive. And then I'll give it a really good watering maybe even a, a whole can of water. So there we are, that's my mint. That'll see me through for another few years. The onions, if I wanted some spring greens, these are good enough to start harvesting now. So I'll just take one, because there's quite a, a lot in just the one bunch, and I'll leave the rest there to carry on growing. And next door, even though the uh, broad beans have been eaten to within an inch of their lives, there are beans there. If you have black fly on your beans, I haven't had it yet. A tip is to take the tip out. So just put your finger in and just nip that out and that will help to deter the black fly. And if these are clean, you can actually put these into a stir fry. If you remember, about six weeks ago, I think it was, I sowed some radish and I sowed them 
using the seed that came in a tape so that it's already impregnated with the seed at the desired intervals. I think I got them from King's Seed. King's. So I'm going to harvest some of them now and they've made quite a nice size. Look at that one there. In the background you can just about see the carrots that I am growing as well. That's on a seed tip. So let me have a look. Look at this. I've got radishes coming out all over the place. Now one of the drawbacks that I've realized with doing these seed tips is a lot of the produce comes at the same time. So what I would do next time is I would actually cut the tape down into sections and just plant small sections of it. Look at them. Shoals of radish, if that's a term. It's nice to have a nice bit of breeze, which is what we're getting at the moment. So here it is, it's the variety is called Lunchbox, they produce small cucumbers and I like to get my cucumbers off by just turning them around and then after a while they'll just come away and there you go, look at that. Now we can already smell the uh, melons, now these are grafted ones which means that the top of the melon is grafted onto a stronger rootstock. I'll be gentle with these. Put this one over here. Now because this is the first watering, I'll give them a little bit of water from the top just to settle all the soil. Then I'll fill the reservoir. Quite handy because you've got this gauge here that tells you when it's full. It's surprising how much it actually takes. There we go. That's full up. I think it's time to pack up. Now, in front of the run of beans here, I'm going to sow some swede. I quite like swede. And because the ground is a bit dry, I'm just going to go over it with a little hand rake to break it up. Now, you can sow all these seeds at the same time, because swede will stay in the ground quite well over winter. You can also lift them and store them indoors if you've got space in dry sand. So, now they do get quite big, so don't put them too close, but try and imagine the size of a swede, and then you'll get a, an idea about the spacing. There's the seed, like little ball bearings. So I'm going to take a drill out using my hand, just like that, I'll just up to this point and I'll do the rest when I have a bit more time. Now because the soil is rather dry, I'm just going to water the ridge that I've just created. This will help the seeds get off to a flying start. I 
and then just sew them. It doesn't matter if you sew them too thickly, you can take out the thinnings. And then all you do is you cover with soil, pop a label at the end of the row and keep it weed free and watered. And there you go. I'm going to harvest the last of my radish. But they're getting quite big now. And I can use this space for putting something else in. What's the size of that one? These are going in my juicer, so it doesn't really matter what the size is. So there, we've got some extra growing space again. Now my broad beans look a bit straggly, but it's time to uh, harvest them. Called Karamazoo, I think it says. And look at that, nice pink pods in there. Look at that, beautiful. And you open this one as well. I'm actually not going to harvest a lot of these because I want them to go to seed. So I can have more for next year. Yeah, nice salmon pink pods. Attractive looking things, aren't they? But the key is in the flavour. So all in at once. Now, when you run a beans that have got to the top of the sticks, in order to get a better crop, if we just pinch out the top, so just cut the top off, and then more beans will be put into the side shoots, more energy will go into the side shoots of the plant. So I'll just remove that. There we go. If you remember, I grew some of these in pots in the greenhouse and the rest I've just put in seed. So you can see the difference. These are the greenhouse ones up to here and these are the seeds put straight, in, straight into the ground. And they're catching up so there's no big difference if you haven't got a greenhouse. There's been a lot of growth in the greenhouse recently on the melon son loves melon and there's certainly a lot going on i'm gonna have to go through this and hand pollinate just to be sure of a good crop but i'll do that on another day the broad beans have come to an end now these are the red ones which when you put these into a pot of water and boil them, they actually turn yellow. They're a bit big now, but I'm going to get rid of this. I haven't got a lot of strawberries because they were affected by the frost earlier in the year, but there are a few there, enough for a feed, enough to sit down and watch the tennis with. I have decided I'm going to move them out of this bed at the end of the year and create something that doesn't take up so much space. There you go, that's a nice handful for breakfast tomorrow. The first of the tomatoes are ready for picking and to pick tomatoes You'll see there's a small node on the base of where the tomato is joined to the stem. If you just put your finger on that and pull, it'll come off easy. So let me just show you that again. If you look at the top, you'll see there's, that's where the join is, that's where the, the flower started. And then you just grab the tomato and if you just put your finger on there and bend it back, It'll come off nice and easy. Mm -hmm. 
I'm already hopped a in the greenhouse. It's a good idea just to throw some water on the floor, just so it cools the atmosphere down and brings the temperature down a few degrees, which will help to help the plants to grow. There's Rusty there, trying to keep cool in the shed. He's already had some food and some water, but it's a, it's a job to be cool, isn't it Rusty? Those who have been following these videos for quite a few years will remember about two years ago I planted this tree, it's called Prince William, also known as Juneberry, because it produces edible berries. They're like purple um, windberries as we call them in Wales or blueberries. They look like them but they don't taste like them. So there's quite a few on this bush. This will actually grow to about six foot tall in its time. So I'm keeping a check on it. Make sure it doesn't go too tall. There's a handful there, and the taste, well, they taste as if they actually do you some good. They taste like one of, one of these super fruits, and there's a bit of an almond taste to it. And they taste very nice, especially in the morning. So I'm going to have them in a smoothie, I think. This is the Red Love Apple, and it's gonna be a bumper crop this year. This is a nice eating apple. It's very juicy, and when you slice it open, the redness goes all the way to the core, and when you cook it, the redness stays there as well. Now I saw this on a website the other day, and I can't remember which one, but it's a herb garden in a wheelbarrow. Uh, I had a spare wheelbarrow with some holes in the bottom, so I filled it up with some soil and put in some herbs. And when they get too big, I'll just put them into the open garden. But for the time being, that's my portable herb garden. And if I want to move it, I could just lift it up and have herb garden will travel. Look at the size on that. I'm going to use this in juicing and just with a firm hand pull it up and just take some of that soil off. Less soil in the sink. The leaves, you can use the leaves as spinach and like I said I'm going to have this and put it into the into the juicer. Now there's two others they're quite small, so I'll leave those ones. There's a big one at the back here. Oh, give that a yank. And two is enough for me. So there you go. First of the beetroots. Wonderful globes. The sweet peas are in flower, but to encourage more flowers, we have to take off these flowers before they go to seed. With runner beans, it actually helps them if you pick them on a regular basis. Because once you stop picking, they start producing seed because they think that the plant has done its job. So I'll pick these later and take them home. Now if you look on this runner bean here, you'll see this little insect. 
this is actually a ladybird. So I'm actually going to leave this bean there so, I, so that I don't disturb it because I do have some black fly and these will help to keep the infestation down. Now I've always grown my onions from sets but this year I thought I'd try it from seed and look at the size on that. A really nice size. This is a variety called onion kappa and I'll definitely be growing this again next year. Look at that. Beautiful size. Now my beetroots are getting a bit big but it's fine because I use them for the juicer mostly. But don't forget, you can use these tops as spinach if you want to. Now, I'm going to lift this one. It's a rather large one. And that'll go perfect in my juicer tomorrow morning. Look at that. Homegrown is the best grown. If you've been following my Instagram, and if you are not, then I'll put the link on the screen for you. You'll see that I planted this wheelbarrow there you go, wheelbarrow, with some herbs only about two weeks ago and they've put some tremendous growth on. Now they're not going to stay in here forever, they're just here as a temporary measure until I get their spot in the garden ready. But the growth there is wonderful and it's made a nice little addition to the kitchen garden. Quick update on the Swede planted this, what was it, three weeks ago? And they're putting on fantastic growth. Just don't know what's happened on the allotment in the last 48 hours. Everything's just appeared to double in size. Have you noticed this year how the rhubarb is putting on a fantastic second harvest? Look at those stems. But don't forget, the leaves are poisonous, so just cut them off like that. And what I like to do is to put them into a dark black bag and leave them there for a few months and then you get some nice good compost at the end of it. Now, I tend to make a nice drink from rhubarb. I'll put the, the link to it in the description below. Look at them. Beautiful. I'm just going to give you a quick little look at my melons. Look at the size on that. So I've got, I've actually got three and these small ones here, these aren't going to come to anything. So I'm pulling them off so that all the goodness goes into these big ones. And I've got one up here as well. Beautiful size on them. And then there's another one which I found out by accident just hiding behind there. So those are the three. I have looked. Maybe there's another one hiding somewhere else but I haven't seen any more. I think this is the biggest one so far. And if the good weather stays then we'll be eating melons. I don't actually think these are finished yet. There's a bit more weight to put on top of them. This is the temperature for this week. So the hottest has been this week is 42.8. Just reset that. I'm feeling a bit hungry, so I think I'll have a plum for my breakfast.
beautiful. The fruit this year has been wonderful. And there's going to be plenty of produce for jams. In fact, I'm still eating the jams that I created last year. So there we have it, that's just from this morning. There's plenty more there. I think Vivi's coming over later to get some herself. So I'm gonna take these home and put some into a juice and freeze the rest. And probably make some jams and jellies out of them. I recently found this cabinet. So I'm putting it in the corner here, mainly because that's the only space that I can find. There we have a shelf on top where I can put all my bits and bobs back. Now I've just gone into the greenhouse just to check that everything's okay. And I've discovered that something's fallen off. Yes, the melon's fallen off from the stalk, so I'm going to eat it. Nice and juicy inside as well. I can already smell it. Right, here we go, the grand opening. Look at that. Now that's impressive. Ooh. We'll definitely be growing these again next year. Wonderful. Oh, look at that. That's a decent enough size. So what I'm going to do is, because I can tell that they're quite small by the amount of leaf on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this opportunity to thin the carrots out and then allow the smaller ones just to grow a bit bigger. It's a decent size though. Look at them. In fact, I think that's all I'll take now. That's all I can cope with for my dinner. Oh, just one more, go on. And then I'll leave the rest in to fatten up. But look at that. It's quite nice, isn't it? This is the hanging basket that I had the tomato tumbler in. And as you can see, the harvest is finished. So now I'm going to take everything out and plant it up ready for winter. Some fresh soil in the bottom. And I'm not going to put anything into the center because what will happen is this whole basket will become a riot of pink flowers so there won't be any space in the center I don't think in fact I don't think there's enough space to put six plants in here this is quite a small basket the onset of autumn seems to be coming very early this year how about your gardens tell me in the comments below if autumn is has appeared to arrive early so there we are right let's hang this up I'm going to sow some onions, winter Lisbon, and you can do these from July to September, and I'm sowing them in one of these trays, and I'll keep these outdoors because it's a bit too hot to have them in the greenhouse during these months, 
So fill it with some multi-purpose compost or seed sowing compost. You can sow these directly outside. Sow them about one centimeter deep with 25 centimeters between the rows. But I'm going to do them inside and then when they get big enough I'm going to transplant them. So just sprinkle thinly. You don't want to do too many in the one sitting. I like to cover my seed with vermiculite to give a bit of extra light to the seedlings. I tend to go by the rule of cover with soil if the plant is going in the shade. If it's going in the full sun put some vermiculite on top and then give it a, a watering but only water with water from the tap because if you water seedlings with water from the water butt then there's probably going to be bacteria in there and you want your seedlings to have the best start in life possible. Don't forget to pop a label on and then come back in a few months when I'll be harvesting them. This is my squash harvest for this year. It's quite good. There are one or two that still need to turn green, but I can put them on the windowsill. So there, the entire weight of the 2014 harvest is from 10 plants, 19 pound and 76. So 19 pound 76, which is 8.96 kilograms. Not bad, right. Let's have that cup of tea. Because the, the, the skin, the coating of a sweet pea is actually quite hard, there are two ways to aid it into germination. The first one is to get a really sharp knife and just to nick the side of the pea. But the problem is they're so small, what happens is they end up shooting all over the place. So the other way is to put them into pots Cover them with water and leave them for 24 hours so that they swell up and during that swelling it slightly breaks the coating of the sweet pea. And then it's just one seed per pot. Then put a little bit more soil on top and that's it. Either keep these in the greenhouse on the windowsill or in the cold frame. Now one way of getting free compost is if you look at this time of year, November, December, local councils are collecting the leaves and in this council here they put them into blue bags, put them at the, at the end of the street and they leave them there for collection the next day. But if you can be quick you can grab the bags and take them to your plot and all you do is just pierce a few holes in and put them in a secluded part of the allotment or in the garden where you can forget about them and then leave it for 12 months don't do anything to it and then 12 months on this bag I put here was last year and this is what you end up with leaf mold compost and look at that beautiful for putting around your beds as a mulch or just to improve the soil. I'm going to put this onto my raised beds just to raise the level up and to add some more goodness. Look at it, free compost. You might find bits of plastic or boxes, but you can sift them out. So keep an eye out the next time the leaves are falling and grab yourself some free compost. One of the other advantages of putting your broad beans in at this time of year is that 
by the time they get tall enough and the black fly is busy attack, attacking everything in the garden, your stem has actually hardened up over the winter and it's a lot more difficult for the black fly to penetrate so your crop doesn't get attacked as much. They'll still get attacked but it won't be as bad as if you've put them in during the spring. Autumn is certainly here anyway. Can't start the day without a cup of tea. In this section of the bed, I'm going to plant Welsh onions. Now these look the same as spring onions. They're part of the family, of course. But the difference is, these stay in the ground all year. Oh, the smell is wonderful. You can chop them, use them as a sub substitute for chives, or just lift out a whole bulb and chop it as a spring onion but you put them in and they form clumps a bit like chives so I'm going to put them in this section here so I'm going to plant these in a line here just one row uh, I'm going to try and tease them apart making sure that I've kept some of the root on the bottom and then to plant them simple hole, not too deep. These are quite good because it gives you something in the winter to eat if you haven't got any onions left from the store. And then that will bulk up, similar to a chive. Just going to put two rows I think if I've got any spare, then I'll give them away. I was going to head home, but I think I will do a bit of cleaning in the greenhouse. This is a reminder, some bird seed. Fat balls for the birds, I might put a few of these out before I leave. One thing you, that you shouldn't feed birds Especially when it's the time of year when the small chicks are, are around. Never feed them bread and water because you can actually uh, kill them. Same with hedgehogs as well. Quick look at the garden before I pack up. The broad beans over there are doing well. They're coming through this weather. Uh, the peas next door, I need to just support them on the sticks. Welsh onions, they're establishing. And then over in this other bed, I've still got a few 
Swede, otherwise known as Rutabaga. And next door to that is my garlic. And then under the cloche on the right hand side are my spring cabbage. One of the projects that I'm doing throughout the winter will be the pond section. I put my herb garden in, if you remember I did that the other week, over there. And I put some of the herbs into pots, like mint, because they do like to spread. And the pond, I'm actually going to fill in and move the pond. I was thinking about turning this into a fruit garden. But I was talking to Vivi, and to the conclusion that herbs and flowers might be better. So all this section here will be herbs and flowers by spring next year. Earlier, if you remember, I was talking about my sweet peas. If you do have sweet peas, then ease off on the watering. During the winter, you don't need to water things as often. Those I watered about two weeks ago. So I'll just give them a quick spray with my spray gun before I leave. And I'll just keep an eye on them. And the next time I'll water them will probably be in about another 10 days. So, not a lot else to do now. I need to go home and do a few other projects in the house. So I'm going to finish my tea, bid you farewell, and see you next time. So from me and Rusty, bye for now.